there's a manic desire to go and press forward. And uh, Maeda sets a tone like any striker that's prepared to go and shut down and work as hard as that. It does. It encourages everybody then to lift it. The intensity from the start is so impressive from Celtic. If you go and do that, you scramble the brains of defenders. They just don't know. They're not set on into the game. As they, as they go in behind, as they drop them short, they've got that much movement. It's the key feature of Ange, I think, for me, is that, I mean, I know they've got quality players, but they've got a real desire and hunger to go and outwork teams. And if you've got that combined with, with the superior ability, you've got the perfect remedy, the perfect recipe to go and uh, achieve what they want to do. Yeah, you can see, I certainly can see why Ange kind of crowbars my head in to, to most of his starting elevens because, as you say, he just hunts the ball down. He leaves defenders not, not a second on the ball. And that's, in the modern game, that's exactly what you need. He doesn't um, have the same kind of class, shall we say, as others, but that quality that he has um, to set the, set the tone quickly. Some sometimes enough. I mean, he's a decent player, but he's not in that same kind of level technically as others. But what he brings is that, like I say, manic desire to make sure that they get possession, and he sets the tone. He's worth his weight in gold. Mm-hmm. And up front, Graham, um, sticking with the strikers, um, Kyogo Furuhashi, um, obviously got Celtic underway. The first goal at Kilmarnock. It was a really good goal. Brilliant movement. I think his movement has always been top class. Um, but later in the game, Jack and Marcus come on and scored a, a screamer of his own. I, I feel like I feel like Jack and Marcus deserves a wee bit more of a look in than he's got or he's had at the start of the season. I, th- I think we're probably it's not a dissimilar argument to where we were in the summer about that was maybe Mick and I talking about it. And, like both of us maybe made the case for Jack and Marcus in Champions League games. And but when you see Kyogo, um, what he brings, he brings everything that he's been bringing since the moment he's came into the team. Like. Excellent movement, that threat of the run behind. So Kyogo by um probably what he's achieved so far deserves the nod. So it's just the position Celtic are in. I know there's this argument to maybe try to find both in the team. I don't think that would probably work. It would be advantageous to Celtic at present. So Jackie Mike, it's just because there's no injuries as well. Celtic have got a strong squad. Last season it was one in, one out a lot of times, so they were able to get runs a game time. Jackie Mike is as we is one of the most natural one touch finishers you'll see at that level and I think when you look at his stats area the, in Holland as well, Holland's been fool's gold for strikers for so long. So this idea that Celtic were able to get the top score on the area de Vizio last year, uh, almost felt, I think a lot of fans over the years, Alfonso Alves and Matthias Kesman, these guys that have fought elsewhere, um, there's maybe a natural kind of hesitancy. But because he's a ability in the box, he's, he's actually the perfect Dan striker because what he does. But then Kyogo's the perfect striker because the movement's so good. So I think it's a kind of a, a dueling kind of decision that Postacoglu has got most weeks. If I still, as good as Kyogo started the season, as good as he's been, I think the physicality that Jackie Mack has brought in the two Rangers wins in the league last season um, would translate well to the Champions League. And parts he made the point about a bit more physicality in midfield. So if you combine, I know they were after Vinicius Souza, who seems like a, a complete defensive midfield. I think if a player like that was found, plus what Jackie Marcus brings up top, that's your best of both worlds. 